I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you have countless guides in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then, be imitators of me. That is why I sent you Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach them everywhere in every church. Hello there. Why do people subconsciously copy other people's accents? Has this ever happened to you? You ever, you ever done this? You're speaking to someone who speaks in a different accent and without thinking, you start going into that accent. You pick up their intonation, the way of saying things. And it can be quite embarrassing if this has ever happened to you. There's also some, uh, I guess, famous examples of this. Well worth your time on YouTube looking uh, them up. A favourite of mine is a footballer called Joey Barton, who's uh, from Liverpool. But towards the end of his career, he moved to Marseille. And uh, even though he's, he's conducting an interview in France, in English, but because he's speaking to French people, he starts sort of putting on a French accent accidentally, and uh, it's, it's hilarious. Well worth your time. Um, but but we do this. Uh, this is a thing that happens. It's it's sort of recognised as the chameleon effect. And apparently the reason that it happens is there's something in our brain that does it for, I guess, um, relational purposes. We want to sort of empathise with other people and we, we, we copy them. And it's not just the way people talk. Actually, what we do is we copy people's uh, behaviour as well. We copy uh, gestures or facial expressions as we are speaking to people. And uh, if this happens to you a lot, it's probably the case that you're more empathetic uh, to others. It's a sort of a relational uh, skill even, even though it comes out in a sort of embarrassing way uh, sometimes. And throughout this series, we've been, I guess, in one sense, reflecting on that, reflecting on the fact that we are uh, relational beings. We seem to be hardwired for uh, relationship. And the Bible actually says, yes, God has made us to be uh, relational beings. We relate to one another, but he's also designed us uh, in a way to relate to him. And the fact that we are sociable, the fact that we are relational, is actually points us to we're made for relationship and ultimately for relationship with God. And so throughout this series, we've been reflecting on that and, and taking the Bible's wisdom of how do we do relationships well? What do they teach us about what God is like and how that can be helpful uh, and challenging even uh, to us? And so today in this last session, we're focusing on this topic of imitation that was mentioned in the passage from 1 Corinthians that we have just heard. And I guess my uh, illustration to um, introduce this kind of shows that, that this is imitate, copying other people is something that we do accidentally. And it's not just uh, something that we sort of do in a very uh, silly way in terms of accents and that sort of thing. In fact, all our relationships that we have in life, socially, with friends, or, or in the workplace as well, or with family, they have an impact on what we do. If you think about your life, you think about the decisions that you make day to day, what you wear, what you eat, how you spend your time, uh, even how you talk. Those are not things that you've just sort of come up with yourself. If you reflect on any one of those things and ask the question, who's influenced me in this? Why do I do this a certain way? Why do I eat the food that I'm going to eat today? It's probably because we were brought up eating that food or we're, we're married to someone and that's what they like and that's what we eat. Or someone, a friend recommended a certain food and now we eat it. Actually, so many of our decisions are influenced by our relationships. We pick, we pick it up almost accidentally, without, without thinking. And it's because, as I say, we're relational beings. But the kind of copying, the kind of imitation that the Apostle Paul is talking about in this passage from 1 Corinthians is, is not really that sort of accidental I mean, that, that is important. And as we have gone through this relational wisdom series, um, one of the things I suppose we've reflected on is, well, if our relationship with others is going to influence us, well, partly the wisdom that we want to learn is to choose those relationships well because they are powerful in our lives. 
But Paul is pushing this idea further. And he actually says, you know, imitate me. There's something very direct. There's something very intentional uh, about what he is saying. And as we hear these words where he says, imitate me, be imitators of me. I think in our day and age, that kind of sentiment comes across as quite odd to us. We're not used to saying that. We're not used to hearing that from people. Even today, as you're tuning in to hear me speak, you're not expecting me to say, what you need to do is just copy me. No, you're, you're expecting me to maybe tell you about what the Bible says and truth and maybe include my opinions at some stage. But for a Bible teacher, the Apostle Paul, to say, no, what you need to do is copy me, it kind of, kind of makes us uncomfortable a little bit. Because we don't like that idea in our society. We like our independence. We like our individuality. And so when something challenges us that we see as might be in contra- in conflicting with that, it, we get a bit nervous. We're very happy to, um, I guess, copy or imitate people with, I guess, the external things of life. This, this kind of uh, happens, happens all the time. We're, we're happy to copy uh, someone's fitness regime, or I'm going to do what they do. We are happy to read a book and copy someone's sort of business strategy or, or technique in a certain hobby or that sort of thing. We can, we're happy to copy the externals. I saw uh, the cover of the uh, Daily Mirror this week and it had Wisdom of Solomon on the front page. It made me chuckle. It was actually Stacey Solomon's uh, tips for spring cleaning your home. But yeah, we're happy to copy someone, a celebrity even. It seems to come with more gravitas if it's a celebrity in those external things. But it, as soon as someone comes a bit deeper with something, copy my, the way I live my life, oh, I get a bit uncomfortable uh, with that. You see, our society says, imitate me with everything superficial, but be yourself with all the important stuff. What Paul is saying in this passage is imitate me in the important stuff. Be yourself with everything else, but imitate me with the important stuff of life. Now, what's he talking about there? What is this important stuff? When Paul says, imitate me, he's speaking to a church, he's speaking to a a group of new believers, and he's saying, be like me. Is he saying, well, just copy what I do and what I wear and and the way I speak and that sort of thing? No, no, he's not saying that. He's actually saying, imitate me in terms of my priorities in life. Imitate me in terms of my morals, my key decisions, my values, in the way I treat other people, in the sort of priorities of life and what I give myself to. I want you to imitate me in that. He actually goes a little bit further later on in this letter to the Corinthians in chapter 11. And he really gives the detail here and he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So he's saying, I want you to imitate Christ, but you can see some of that in me. And as you do that, that's a good thing for you to imitate. In fact, this kind of sentiment is one that he says six times right across the New Testament. He's not ashamed to say it, it seems. No, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And I suppose that's the, the big idea of this message. That one of the best ways to follow Christ is to follow followers of Christ. So the question for us is, do we have relationships like that? If our relationships influence us, are we intentional and seeing the people in our lives as um, followers of Christ who help us to follow Christ better? Do we look at those people in our lives and think there's godliness there and seek to emulate that for ourselves? That is what Paul is encouraging us to do, even commanding us to do. Not the superficial things in life, but the really important things that we see in other people. The Jesus-shaped things. Are you looking? Are you looking for Jesus 
in what other people do and say and the way they live their life and think, actually, I can learn something there. That's what we're pointing towards in this message. Who can you learn from in order to become more like Jesus? Who can teach you? Maybe it's someone in this church, someone in your small group. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a family member. Who's going to teach you and encourage you and help you to treat other people with love like Jesus does and to serve other people and to lay their life down for other people like Jesus does? Who's going to teach you to pray like Jesus prays? Who's going to teach you to be hospitable to others and generous with your time and with your finance? Look to bless others like we see in Jesus. Who's doing that for you? Who's helping with you? Find those people, imitate them. Now you might say, well, you know, (laughs) the people that I might look to, well, they're, they're not perfect. You know, this seems a bit odd imitating someone who's not perfect. And should I just, well, I can look at Jesus myself. Well, yeah, okay, but the people around you, if they're a godly influence, will show you what following Jesus looks like in practice. And yes, they're not perfect. But you know what? There's actually something that we can, a gospel shaped thing that we can learn from other people, even though they're not perfect, that we can't learn from Jesus. We can learn how to repent. We can learn how to respond to our sin. We can learn how to seek forgiveness and reconciliation. That's a a gospel shaped thing that all of us need to learn. Who's good at that around you? What examples have you seen? What can you learn from them? It could be someone that's close to you. It could be someone that is quite like you in many ways. It could be something, someone that's totally different from you. Just in my small group this week, we um, were having a conversation, I suppose, about things that we're kind of learning. And there was a couple of women in the group who were just sort of sharing that in, that, in the last week, the way that they have sort of reached out to other people and shared a bit of Jesus with them and had opportunity to pray for people and bless them in that way. And I celebrate that with them. I encourage them in that. And you know what? I also, that challenges me. That provokes me. I see Jesus in what they're doing. And I want to be a bit more like that. I see Jesus in that. It, could, it can be anyone around you. You might say, well, do I, need, do I need a mentor? Do I need to find one person who's going to be a mentor? Well, that's not a bad thing. Maybe that's a, a good thing for you. But it's not necessarily just one thing. There's lots of ways that we can see Jesus in others and emulate that. And it's going to be helpful and challenging to us. We must do this. It's not, it's not an optional thing. We, we must do this. We need to do this. It's also a radically countercultural thing. Because our society today, the messages that we will hear in a, on a daily basis, will tell us something radically different to this. We are encouraged, implicitly and explicitly, to live as we see fit. We're encouraged to be ourselves in the sense of living according to what we think is right and our own priorities and set our compass the way we think the world should be and and live according to that. Friends, that is the opposite of what Paul is teaching in this passage. That is the opposite of following Jesus. The direct opposite. Paul knows that these Corinthians, this church here, They're young in their faith, but he knows that left to their own devices, they will not just stumble into being more like Christ. You only need to read the rest of the letters to the Corinthians to see just how many ways their lives just do not look like Jesus at all. And so he's admonishing them here. He's challenging them. He's coming at them and saying, you need good examples that are going to point you in a Jesus direction. You need that. And friends, we need this as well. We need this type of challenge. We will be sinfully pulled away from godliness through our own sinful and selfish desires. We need this. We need good examples and we need firm instruction. Listen again to that verse 15 there. 
For you, for though you have countless guides, you do not have many fathers. I read that this week and what a critique of the age in which we live. You have countless guides and you do not have many fathers. I mean, in many ways, that's literally true for the society that we live. Children are being raised without the influence of two parents in the home. But, but much more than that, they're also surrounded by countless guides. They don't have firm instruction about what is right and what is good and what is helpful. But they have countless guides. They have a smartphone, and we all do. We have a smartphone that will tell us anything we want to hear. But what we lack is good instruction, good fathers, good mothers, good people that are going to point us in a Jesus direction. We have so much information and so little wisdom. And so this message is as relevant for these Corinthians as it is for us today, even more so perhaps today. You read the book of Proverbs, the wisdom book in the Bible, and the whole discourse really is from a good and loving father teaching a foolish and naive child and saying, this is good, this is not good. This will do you good in life. This will be harmful and destructive in your life. And you need to follow wisdom. Don't follow the way you otherwise will. And we need to recognize we live in that society. The world tells us, listen to your heart. Sounds nice. The Bible says the heart is deceitful and will lead you astray. The world says, follow your instinct. The Bible says, follow God's word. It's a lamp to your feet. And the world says, be yourself, as, however you define that. God's wisdom to us is be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. You know, when, when someone stands up perhaps in an education or parenting context and says, you know, we, we, we really just need to learn from our children. Our children can teach us so much. When someone says something like that, everyone's, oh, yeah, that's, that's really right. Now, of course, okay, you, kids say funny things. You, you can learn a bit from them, okay. But that type of sentiment is the opposite of what God's instruction to us. Now, God's instruction is left to ourselves. We are naive and foolish, and we need God's help to push us and challenge us and provoke us and to lead us towards Christ-likeness and walk in his wisdom. We have not, even those of us have been a Christian for many years, we have not graduated from this. And we need to hear Paul's words where he says, I admonish you as my beloved children. So we ask the question again, why, why do we need good examples in our lives to imitate? Why do you need that? You need that because left to your own devices, you are a fool. You are prone to do foolish and sinful and selfish things. And you need good people around you who are going to point you away from foolishness and towards Christ likeness. That's what we need. It's very easy to be yourself. And when we're surrounded by a message of be yourself, you, know, you don't have to get out of your bed <laughs> to be yourself. That's easy. And, you know, friends, I am so prone to that, <laughs> to foolishness. <laughs> I have to recognize the fool in me as well and say, you know what? I'm called to something more. I'm called to something more than that. Jesus is come into my life and he is leading me towards becoming more and more like him and I need to recognize the way in my life that is foolish and is sinful and is selfish and change and turn to Jesus the world says be yourself Jesus says be like me I don't know about you I need help I need help with that being yourself that's easy anyone could do that I need help to be more like Jesus I need people around me that are going to help me and provoke me and challenge me. You know, our senior pastor here, Joel, who preaches a lot of the time, 
Um, I don't particularly want to dress like Joel and he doesn't want to dress like me. I don't want to imitate even actually his style of preaching, even though I've learned a lot from, from Joel in terms of preaching because he has his style and I have my... And we're not talking about imitating the superficial things. But let me say this. Joel prays more than I do. And his example in that is a provocation to me. I know I am lazy and ill-disciplined much of the time. But I can see in Joel that he's more committed and more devoted in that area. And I watch his life and I pray with him for the chances that I get because it helps me. It, and maybe he's always going to be a little bit ahead, ahead with me in that area. But I know in that respect, if I'm more like him, I'm going to be a bit more like Jesus. And that's good for me. We need that type of example in our lives. Who are your fathers? Who are your mothers? Might be people even that are younger than you. But are they further on? Can they teach you something about following Jesus? Imitate their Christ-like character. There's, there's, there's not one way of, of being a godly man or a godly woman. Like, don't mishear me today. Let me say again, be yourself in so many ways. No, the way you want to um, speak and eat and the hobbies that you have and your interests and all those sorts of things. Where I'm not pointing towards just everyone being exactly the same. No, be yourself. Be free to be yourself in all those things. I'm talking about Christ-like character. How do you love people? How do you pursue God in your life? Who's helping you with that? Before I finish today... I want to just want to underline one more point because I've been talking a lot about example and seeing others an example that point us towards Jesus. But it's important that we understand imitation in the context of salvation because imitation without salvation is going to be crushing for us. You know, many people see Jesus as a great example. Well, Jesus has provided us an example of how to, to live. You know, Gandhi, he said that. His, Jesus' life, his death on a cross, what a great example of, of humanity. If Jesus is just your example, if you're trying to live just like Jesus, you're not going to get there. That example is going to be crushing to you because you're never going to achieve that. So what am I talking about? Well, Interestingly, the Apostle Paul doesn't actually say follow Christ's example here. He says, imitate me and my ways in Christ. He's talking about the way of Christ, the path of following Christ that begins with being in Christ. Starting from receiving Christ first of all and then following in his ways. You know, if the Christian life is like a sort of a great journey, maybe a journey up Mount Everest, and we think, that, well, it's, it's, it's so difficult, <laughs> it's challenging to, to follow Christ, it's challenging. And we might imagine if we're just looking at in terms of uh, ex Christ's example, perhaps Jesus is at the top. He's at the top of Mount Everest and he's got his arms folded and he's waiting. Can anyone follow me? Can anyone get up this mountain? Is that what... Christianity is about? Is that what it's like? We just try really hard. No, that's not the gospel. The gospel is Jesus came down. Yeah, Jesus is perfect. Jesus is good in every way, but he came down. He came down to where we are at the bottom and takes us by our hand and leads us. See, that's, that's the thing. If we try and follow Christ's example, of course we're going to fail. We're going to fail. We're going to fall. We're going to stumble. We're going to sin. We don't need a Christ who's at the top of the mountain looking down on us. We need a Christ who comes to where we are and forgives us and restores us and reconciles us back to God and, and, and leads us along and carries us at difficult points in the journey as well. You see, the thing of following the way of Christ, we do it with him. We do it with him. He's come to us. He's with us by the Spirit. And yes, we are foolish. We don't need someone to come alongside us and say, no, actually, you're great, and just pat us on the back. 
We need Jesus who comes to us and forgives us and restores us and takes us by the hand and say, come and follow my ways because they will be good for you and they will be life-giving to you. Perhaps you're, I guess, in one sense, far along the journey of the Christian life. And maybe today, and when we're talking about imitation, there's a, a challenge for you to sort of turn around and are there other people that you can help on the journey? They can imitate you as things that you have learned in Christ. But I think for all of us, as we're going through this, this journey, thinking, who is ahead of me in different areas? Who can teach me about what it looks like to be like Jesus? But finally, I want to say this. At the end of this series that we've been going through, there's some of you today that you know you've not started this journey with Jesus. You've heard about Jesus. You've considered some of the things that Jesus has to say, but you know that you're not yet walking with him. And I want to say to you today, do not take one more step without coming to Jesus and receiving him. Because you need his wisdom, but much more you need his love and you need his forgiveness and you need the journey that he will lead you on. Because without Jesus, right now the journey that you are on is going to hell. Jesus has got so much better for He's got a path of life that he wants to lead you on. If that's you, pray with me right now. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need your forgiveness. I need your wisdom. I need your love. I need your life. I'm sorry for my sin. And I put my trust in you. In your name I pray. Amen.